Okay. Go ahead. Voting against. Go ahead. Uh, House Bill 1372 seeks to effectively limit or in most cases abolish claims of public nuisance in Texas. Nuisance is a common law right. <clears throat> this committee should always be suspect of any law that, that seeks to abolish rights or claims under common law. These rights have been in our jurisprudence for centuries for a reason. They are needed to protect rights and once they are taken away and gone, they're not coming back. Nuisance law is based upon the premise that the government has the right, and in most cases, the obligation under its police powers to stop any activity that constitutes an unreasonable interference with the rights common to the general public. Proponents of the bill contend that they are simply trying to codify historic law and that a public nuisance cannot, claim cannot be pursued to obtain damages related to lawfully manufactured product or lawfully conducted activity. Uh, this is not true. This is not the law nor the traditional history of the law. Public nuisance has always been used to address any act or failure that obstructs or damages the rights of the community at large, whether it be lawful or not. This issue was recently addressed in the Supreme Court when discussing the law of nuisance in the 2016 case of Crosstex versus Gardner. And I'm going to read from the case. A defendant's conduct that is useful and lawful in itself can nevertheless create a nuisance if the conduct creates an unreasonable interference. The Supreme Court has told us lawful conduct can cause a nuisance if it's an unreasonable interference. The law has never been that to be considered a nuisance, the activity or source of the activity must be unlawful. If this bill is passed, it would provide protection to the wrongdoers. The nuisance claims you've heard about today are big cases with big malfeasance. It's because it, it talks about wide scale harm to the public. If this bill passes, a company can actually negligently or even intentionally cause a public nuisance and not be held responsible as long as the activity or product is lawful. If you abolish the ability of the government to protect the community from the damages caused by these types of public nuisance, it's your constituents, the taxpayers, who will bear the cost. Now, in, in working on this bill, uh, in preparing for this hearing and talking to, to members, uh, I ran into one common question, and it was, why is it that other causes of action can't be used to address these, is these issues? It's because nuisance is not a cause of action per se, it's an injury. The term nuisance describes a particular injury involving interference with a right common to the public. Therefore, a defendant can be intentionally cause or negligently cause a condition that constitutes an, a nuisance. And I'm going to give you an example. Yesterday, the state of Ohio filed a lawsuit against Norfolk Southern for the environmental disaster caused when their train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. It spilled toxic chemicals everywhere and they were released into the environment. The state sued the railroad in negligence for the defects in the train operation, in trespass for the direct contamination caused by the, by the, 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 uh, what is the vinyl chloride that got onto the ground, and then in public nuisance for the chemical released into the air, the public waterways, and the public lands, and to abate the nuisance. Those are the remedies, the special remedies that are available under nuisance, that if you take away that tool, you don't have it anymore. The public nuisance bridges the gaps and the limitations in the common law causes of action. That's why it's, it has its basis in common law. If you eliminate the injury, you eliminate the ability to recover the damages. And in the case of nuisance damages, it's the taxpayers who have already borne the cost that will continue to. Now, in these, in these cases, in opioids and tobaccos, the public is already bearing the burden of the malfeasance such as opioid addiction. If this bill passes, the taxpayers will continue to bear all the costs. Now, that's the end of my testimony, but I'm happy to take any other questions. All right, thank you, Jack. Uh, members, any questions? All right, thanks to the entire panel. Appreciate thanks. you being here. Thanks for your patience.